Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless now remember when trans activist dylan mulvaney escaped to peru to get away from the hate in america okay surprise i'm in peru and i met machu picchu isn't this just so beautiful um i'm here by myself um, i've seen a lot of llamas and the people here are so kind. I feel very safe here. It's a little sad that I had to leave my country to feel safe, but that will get better eventually. And I am dying for some Trader Joe's rolled chili lime chips. But other than that, I am so content. Still haven't been kissed yet, but I'm holding out hope. And most of all, you know, this trip has just has me feeling like I'm my own best friend again. And that is the best feeling in the world. And I hope that you feel that way about yourself too. But we haven't heard from Dylan since Peru officially classified transgender, non-binary and intersex people as mentally ill. It's a decision that has been slammed by LGBTQ plus activist groups across Peru who say it is a major step backward in the fight for their rights and safety. Did you know same-sex sexual activity used to be illegal in the U.S.? And did you know homosexuality was classified as a mental disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders beginning with the first edition published in 1952 by the American Psychiatric Association? In 1962, beginning with Illinois, states began to decriminalize same-sex sexual activity, and in 2003, through Lawrence v. Texas, all remaining laws against same-sex sexual activity were invalidated. In the United States, same-sex marriage became legal in all 50 states on June 26, 2015, when the Supreme Court ruled in Oberfell v. Hodges the state's bans on same-sex marriage were unconstitutional. In opposition to the Lord's commands, the United States has legalized a sin that he warned would have dire consequences, 2 Peter 2.6, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. All right, when you're in school, you're assigned a book and then you're asked to discuss the deeper meaning behind it. You might have done it with books like To Kill a Mockingbird or Tom Sawyer. And the younger kids do it with books like The Giving Tree. Well, now one school in California is doing this age-old practice with a book about a transgender child. One father telling the Daily Mail that his 11-year-old son had to read it, discuss it, and then bring it to his buddy class of kindergartners and read it to them. So what's the book? My Shadow is Pink. It's about a young boy who likes princesses, fairies, and things not for boys. He also wants to wear dresses. Now we're gonna spoil the ending for you. The boy's father puts on a dress with the boy and says it's okay to go to school like that. The Carlsbad, California parent who first alerted this book to being read, you know, tells the Daily Mail that the school's principal finally called the family, but it was to tell them that teachers were feeling unsafe after the father made a video about this lesson. We reached out to the school district for an explanation. They deny that students were told to read the book and say that it was the teacher who read it aloud to them. This book was selected for this classroom because of its message of encouraging students to be proud of who they are and that it's okay to embrace individuality. There were no conversations about gender surrounding this book. Okay. Now let's go to Maryland where an appeals court is stripping away parental rights. It all started two years ago in Montgomery County when the public school district unveiled its inclusive curricula. And it includes books like The Pride Puppy, Uncle Bobby's Wedding, and Born Ready, the true story of a boy named Penelope. Well, nearly 300 parents filed a lawsuit demanding the ability to opt out, opt their kids out of this 
for pre-K to fifth grade lessons. But this week, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals, yeah, U.S. Appellate Court, ruled against those parents. What does this mean? Their young children now be forced to learn about subjects like sexuality and gender fluidity. We now live in an Isaiah 520 world where evil is good and good is evil, where the sin of being a homosexual or transgender is openly celebrated and even glorified. One of the many signs that we are living in the end times is the epidemic of homosexuality that is sweeping the world today. Jesus said he would return at a time when society parallels the days of Lot, as we read in Luke 17, 28 through 30. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. To find out what parallels our days with the days of Lot, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 19, 1-5 now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house, and he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. The term know them isn't a friendly handshake and how are you. It is to know them in a sexual way. What parallels our days with the days of Lot is homosexuality. Just as in the days of Lot, not only is homosexuality widely accepted today, but it's being taught to our kids just like in Sodom, as we read in verse 4. The men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. Young is the Hebrew word, nar, which means a boy from the age of infancy to adolescence. It is an issue that Fox 5 has covered extensively for the last year. Thousands of parents gathering at rallies, protests, and school board meetings. On Wednesday, a divided federal appeals court ruled that Maryland parents cannot opt their children out of LGBTQ inclusive book curriculum in classrooms. This stems from a lawsuit brought by parents in Montgomery County. Eric Baxter is the senior counsel at the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty, representing roughly 300 parents, Muslims, Christians, and Ethiopian Orthodox, who want to be able to excuse their pre-K to fifth grade students from those specific materials. The issues around sexuality that are simply too um, too mature for such young children. Some of the book titles include The Pride Puppy, Uncle Bobby's Wedding, and Born Ready, the true story of a boy named Penelope. Last year at rallies and school board meetings, Fox 5 also spoke with MCPS parents who opposed the opt-out policy. I mean, I don't want to go down the slippery slope of maybe a Christian parent doesn't want their kids exposed to a Muslim family in a picture. You know, where do we draw that line? We need many more books and not less books because young people are amazing. They're sponges and they don't have hate. Hate is learned. Joining me now is one of those parents involved in this lawsuit, Rosalind Hansen, along with Eric Baxter, senior counsel and vice president at the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty. Rosalind, the court says that the kids have to learn this, whether you're, the parents object or not. Wow. Wow, was right. Yeah, the, school, the court said that there's no right to protect your children unless they're actually coerced to change their beliefs. I mean, that can't be the standard. We're talking about four-year-olds and five-year-olds up through fifth grade. These students are highly impressionable. They love their teachers. The things that they're being taught, they stick in their minds. Parents should know when their kids are going to be taught about sexuality and gender identity and have the right to say, hey, this is too much for my pre-kindergartner or my second grader. There are many people within the church who are teaching that homosexuality is not a sin, when scripture clearly says it is. This is another sign Jesus gave to look for prior to his second coming, as we read in Matthew 24, 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. The United Methodist Church has announced that it is officially lifting its ban on gay clergy and same-sex marriages. The change comes after nearly 8,000 congregations disaffiliated from the UMC since 2019, resulting in the loss of almost one quarter of its members 
over the past five years due to this issue. Youth, culture, and religion expert Alex McFarland of Alex McFarland Ministries joins us now to provide more information on this topic. Alex, it's, it's good to talk with you again. So you contend the Methodist church hierarchy has abusively manipulated church members on this issue. Please explain that. What breaks my heart is not just the UMC's betrayal of Scripture and absolute just deconstruction and, and denial of the Word of God. I don't use this term lightly, but what the UMC has engaged in is really apostasy, is the, the denial of God's Word, the emotional and psychological abuse, uh, telling, you know, just good, honest people that love the Lord, love this country, telling them that you're, you're homophobic, you're transphobic, um, even in one case, when a, a husband and wife married more than 50 years were struggling, should we stay in this church or should we not? One of the Methodist hierarchy urged a wife to divorce her husband and stay in the Methodist church. If the UMC is to survive, they need to repent of their abuse of their members, the extortion they've engaged in to force churches to pay exorbitant money to keep their property, and then they need to turn back and submit to the authority of God's Word, not fight against it as they have been doing. Well, you mentioned uh, earlier that these biblical views are controversial in our contemporary culture. So how do you respond when people accuse you and other evangelicals of hating gays, being homophobic? Uh, how should Christians respond to gays in their church? If I'm going to do what Jesus said do and love my neighbor, and that being to seek the highest good, the, the, the salvation of the soul and the restoration of the life. Why, if I'm going to love my neighbor biblically, would I uh, endorse and affirm something that will destroy the body, if not the soul? And so those that say that uh, to preach the saving gospel of Jesus is hateful, well, they're, they're very misguided. And respectfully, but uh, categorically, I would disagree with that. Actually, telling people how to be saved in Jesus is the highest form of love. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus said there would be a falling away from the Christian faith, and false teachers would rise up, as we read in Matthew 24, 10 and 11. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. The Bible tells us these false prophets will twist God's word, as we read in 2 Peter 3, 15 and 16. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, as written to you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. The Bible goes on to tell us that these false teachers are Satan's servants, as we read in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, and 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. The last days church will not follow the truth in the Bible. They will find false teachers to tell them their sin is okay. And not just that it is okay, but it is biblical, as we read in 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. This is what last days Christianity looks like. It is a Christianity that says there are many paths to heaven. When the Bible clearly says Jesus Christ is the only way, it is a Christianity that approves of homosexuality, fornication. If you are having sex and you are not married, it's not called dating, it's called fornication. And abortion, even though God says these things are sin, it is a Christianity that in its church services look just like the world. Jesus goes on to tell us the last day's church will be such a worldly, Christ-rejecting church that he has been thrown out, as we read in Revelation 3, 14 through 22. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, 
These things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold, refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In these verses of Scripture, Jesus is talking about the last day's lukewarm church, a church that has one foot in the world and one foot in the church. This church is so disgustingly lukewarm that Jesus vomits it out of his mouth. Jesus counsels the last day's church to buy from him gold, which is purity, white garments, which is righteousness, and I salve, which is truth. These three things can only come from the purity, righteousness, and truth that Jesus offers through salvation in him. Jesus is now standing outside the door of the last day's Laodicean church, offering salvation to anyone who will listen. This is the grace and mercy of God. He has been kicked out of his own church and yet still knocks and offers salvation to anyone who hears his voice and opens the door. I implore you today, if you are not saved or are a lukewarm Christian, to take up Jesus' offer of salvation that can only be received through him and only him. John 14.6 Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Men and women are built differently. Want proof? Go to Portland, where a trans high school track star is crushing his female competition. He's the top runner in the state, in the girls' division, and he's getting booed. have had it. One mom says her daughter has been warned, stay quiet and lose to a man or get banned for life. My daughter is in her senior year and she has to compete. I'm sorry. She just won first at state and took away spots from her girls. A lot of parents are afraid to speak out because there is racial question from OSAA that if you discriminate or put anyone down for their gender or talk negative Children Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Deuteronomy 22.5 A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Leviticus 18.22 You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. A transgender athlete in Washington State winning first place at a Junior Olympic track event, beating out the biological girls by almost seven seconds. And on the East Coast, the Supreme Court refuses to weigh in as Maryland parents are fighting to end a policy that will allow schools to conceal children's gender identity, allow them to transition, without telling the parents. Riley, you're the perfect person to come on. You dealt with this. What's your reaction to, we got the picture, we can show the picture of the 
transgender athlete who won first place by seven seconds. And we got the pictures of the second place winner from her parents because her mom said she had a knee injury. She worked her way back. She was first place until this, the transgender athlete wanted to compete. Well, it breaks my heart. Um, but this should not be surprising to anyone anymore because the story is virtually the exact same every single time. This is coming, becoming more and more common. Uh, it's seemingly a mediocre man who decides to switch to the women's team who becomes a record smasher, and that's exactly what we've seen here. I mean, they're in eighth grade. This boy's built. He has bigger biceps. His legs are built. Look at him compared to the rest of the girls. And I want to commend uh, the second place finisher, the rightful winner, Ansley Wilson. Uh, her face wasn't blurred, which means that she was okay with putting her name and her face out there. And I think that's applaudable. Uh, that is something that is, I understand the risk. I understand the threats. Uh, but she deserves to be deemed and called the champion. And this is purely about fairness. And making sure the girls are safe. That's what this is about. That's the, the stance that we have taken. And the stance, it very often gets labeled as anti-trans or transphobic, but let's be very clear. The stand that I have taken, I'm not standing against anything. I'm standing for something. And what I am standing for is safety. I am standing for transparency. I am standing for privacy in areas of undressing. I'm standing for equal opportunity. The stand that I have taken is pro-woman, not anti-anything. How we got to this point, where we're headed, uh, and what we can do about it as everyday people, as female athletes, as coaches, as parents, um, because ultimately it's up to us to call out the hypocrisy and to push back. Are you glad that you took this stand? Do you regret it? Or if you could go back, would you take it this far again? I don't regret it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, we're often told that you'll be ostracized. Um, I mentioned the threats and the risk, but let me tell you, it is the easiest thing in the world to say that there are two sexes and that you can't change your sex, and that each sex is deserving of equal opportunity, privacy, and safety. That's a hill I'm willing to die on, and if that's not a hill that parents are willing to die on, again, just everyday common sense people who intuitively know that men and women are different, then what in the world is the hill that you're willing to die on? Being transgender is at odds with science and God's design, as we read in Genesis 126 and 27. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Somehow, in some mysterious and wonderful way, the human male and female, in both body and spirit, are the image and likeness of God. Satan hates mankind because we are created in God's image. He is sowing confusion in the minds of our children. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Superman looms large in the otherwise unassuming quiet town of Metropolis, Illinois. But there is a fight brewing over the town library that locals worry even the Man of Steel couldn't resolve. We've got to protect one to protect them all. Everyone needs to just stand up. Rhonda James never imagined being president of this small town library board would be controversial. She says, I did not bring my children to the library for religious indoctrination. In the winter, she started receiving letters saying her library director prayed with children, pushed Christianity, and had quietly removed computers and thousands of books with themes about sexual identity, other religions, and even Halloween. In all the years that you've been on the library board, have you ever received letters like these? No. The board confronted the library director, who answered NBC affiliate WPSD when asked if the library censored materials. Absolutely not. Board members say they asked her to sign a form promising to end prayer in the library. When she refused, the board terminated her, further fueling a small town's battle over its library. The libraries have things that come straight out of Sodom and Gomorrah. This is Brian Anderson, a town councilman and pastor, preaching to his congregation, which includes the mayor, that Satan was in the library. These children that you see here, the enemy hates them, and the enemy wants to kill them. First Peter 5.8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, 
seeking whom he may devour. Typically, Baptist pastor Glenn Corum says he agrees with other conservative ministers on moral issues, but not this one. You've got someone who's pushing to enforce religious agreement on a public institution. Should the local library reflect the views of the majority? No, I don't think so. The library opens up the world to, to entirely different ways of thought. Colossians 2.8 Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. According to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. In March, Metropolis Mayor Don Canada sided with Pastor Anderson and announced he'd remove library board members, a step the Illinois Secretary of State called unacceptable. The mayor paused his plans. Do you think that prayer is appropriate in the public library? Well, no. It depends, yeah. I'm going to say that if you're asking me, is it, do I think it's all right? If it was approved by everybody involved, then I don't see what the problem is. At a public town meeting, council member and pastor Brian Anderson declined to speak with us. I wonder what no comment there. Anybody know that? But people there had plenty to say about him. His behavior has consequences that go on beyond the library. The mayor now has until June to make a decision about the library board. Rhonda James left worried about her fate and her community. We want to have freedom to practice whatever religion we want or to not practice religion. We want to have the freedom to gather information and learn things. For the love of the library, she says she'll stand her ground. Brothers and sisters, persecution is here. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared because true Christians will be persecuted like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right, and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians, and scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well, as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things. Fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is here. Luke 17, 26 through 30. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Just in the days of Noah, when God sent a flood, and in the days of Lot, when God sent fire and brimstone to judge mankind, he is about to send his final judgments on a wicked and unrepentant world. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, 
But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.